Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My name is Muhammad Shweb. Welcome back. In today's video, we will learn how to create a new project in Semantic Manager and download it into a PLC Sim Simulator. And we will also learn what is the organization block and different type of organization block we will discuss. Whether you are a beginner or just looking to refresh your skills. This guide will help you to get started step by step. So let's create a, a new project. To create a new project in the Semantic Manager, double click here in the Semantic Manager icon. So new set of wizard will be open. This new set of wizard we can open from here in the file manager or, or it will uh, automatically it will open it. Just click at next. The next step you have to select the CPU, any of the CPU as per your project requirement and uh, uh, you have to select the order number which uh, CPU you want to select. It. So just select the CPU and after that you can just keep it default the CPU name also or you can put it any name uh, of the CPU and this name later you can also change this name also and the MPI address MPI stand for the multipoint interface and the MPI is a standard communication interface built into every step 7 CPU that allow uh, programming devices to connect with the PLC. So generally, do not need to change uh, the default address unless you have more than one CPU on the same MPI network. This setting can also be changed once the new project has started. So I will just keep it default this uh, MPI address and then just click next. So next is the block. So you can you can select any of the block and and you can also click here help on the OBs. So in this tutorial video we will also learn what is the organization block and we will also learn about the different type of organization block. Here are the major organization block. So we'll uh, like the most important organization block we will also uh, learn in detail in this video. For example, we will learn OB1. Then we will also learn, learn the here uh, cyclic interrupt organization block and few of the more blocks like OB1, OB100. We'll also learn this and we will also learn the OB121 and OB vulnerability. So we'll learn in detail in the same tutorial video. So then here you have to uh, select the uh, language which uh, uh, programming language you want to st uh, uh, configure. STL stands for the statement list. LAD stands for the ladder logic. And FBD stands for the function block diagram. So for this tutorial video, we'll select ladder logic, LAD. And after that, we'll click next. So here you have to put the name of your project. The name should not be the uh, the same as in the list if for example if you put the any name that already exists in the project list so it will give you like that red error so you have to create put the unique name of the project for example i will put it project underscore zero one then click at the finish So our uh, project is created now. 
So in this tutorial video, I will not go in detail of the hardware. So we are just creating a just new uh, project uh, and we will learn about now uh, in the OB, what is the organization block. So what exactly the organization block? Simply it's block that control when and how your PLC execute the logic. It's entry point for the PLC execution. Different type of OBs handle specific tasks such as cyclic operations, event based trigger or error handling. They help the PLC respond to regular task system events and hardware and software issues. So now let's uh, go over the main type of OBs using the semantic manager. So first is the cyclic execution OBs, for example, OB1. The most important OB is a OB1. It's run continuously in a loop. Processing your main logic. Everything you program here will execute every time the PLC complete, complete a cycle. This make OB1 essential for tasks like reading sensor or controlling mode. So second organization branch is a time trigger OBs, for example, OB35. Time trigger OBs like OB35 execute a logic uh, and it's uh, execute at regular intervals. Here we have OB35 set to 100 milliseconds. So uh, there are different types of OBs also there that can execute or different time interval. These are useful for things like periodic data logging or checking sensor status at precise intervals. Then we have the startup OBs, for example, OB100. When your PLC power up or restart, OB100 run first. It's perfect for the initialization task, like resetting the counters or setting or putting uh, some static uh, value inside the variable to uh, for the default value. Then we have the interp OBs. For example, OB20. Interrupt OBs like OB20 execute when a specific hardware or software event occur. For example, if the limit switch is activated, OB20 can stop or start the mode immediately. Then we have the error handling OBs, for example, OB121 and OB122. OB121 are used for the error handling. If the program encounter an unexpected issues like a division by zero, OB one to one can log the error and keep the system running without crashing. To understand OB in more better way, you have to understand the PLC cycle, how it's work. So PLC scan cycle, once it starts, then the first step is doing the reading the in input. The PLC read all sensor and input. And then the st second step is execute logic in the OB. The logic inside OB and other OBs are processed and then after executing the lo uh, logic, then the second step is the PLC update output like motor and actuators, like it's update uh, their output inside the image. And the last step is, is checking the events and error. If an interrupt occur or an error is detected, the corresponding OB will execute immediately. So this is a scan cycle how OBs work, like it's read input register from the physical hardware store inside the image, then execute OB logic, it takes 
data from the uh, image registers and after that execute the logic and then it save those results in the output image area and after that it's checking the interrupts and errors then the or uh, organization uh, block what is the best practice for the organization block so keep ob logic as much as simple you can do it use it mainly for the calling other blocks like fcs or fbs to keep the scan time loop so we we'll recommend do not put more logic in the ob1 just put just call uh, other blocks inside the ob1 the second best practice is use uh, trigger obs wisely for the periodic task avoid overloading the plc with too many short intervals and the third and last best practice is handle error gracefully always program ob1 to 1 or ob1 double 2 to catch the unexpected issues and keep your system uh, running because if you will not use the ob1 to 1 and 1 to your plc controller will go uh, possibility your controller will go uh, goes into the stop mode so now let's create a logic inside the controller in OB and we will see how it's executed. So our in this tutorial now we'll open the OB1. Okay, so we'll create here uh, one simple logic. I will just select the this open contact and then close contact and after that coil I will take it and then I will just create a one latch logic. Suppose I will put it here in the internal memory bits M0.0. .0. And similar manner here I'll put M0.1 and here I will put M0.4. So I will use the same output logic here. So that's it. Just save it. and that's it so now so after that if you uh, to turn on the simulator you just click it here so we'll select it from here as in the beginning uh, we select the MPI interface. So we'll select the MPI interface and we'll just click it here on the uh, run mode. And after that, come here and just select the download icon and click yes. And then again, click yes. Okay. And click yes, yes, yes. We want to just start. So as you as you can see now, our PLC sim is in the run mode. So we'll open the our controller uh, this logic and go in the run mode. So when you click it here, we'll go. Uh, our program is going the run mode and we will just check what logic we put it it's working fine so as you can see our logic is perfectly working i put it zero and if i, I want to turn off my output i will just on it so as you can see it's working our logic is working perfectly 
so alhamdulillah we will learn in this tutorial video how we can create a project in the semantic manager and we will also learn the organization block different types of organization blocks so thanks for watching this video